I know I said I was going to do a reticulated python video, enclosure video, uh, well there's a little hiccup in that, as it is leaking so everything isn't running at the same time, I'm just doing more frequent, uh, well actually, not even, I'm doing more frequent water changes, yes, but that's because my perpetual water changer isn't working on it yet, because if it goes to that level it will leak. Anyway, we'll show you the new stuff that's on all the equipment and enclosures with the anaconda enclosure and then I'll show you how it's not working on the reticulated python enclosure or why it's not equipped right now because of that leak uh, but we will go over the reticulated python enclosure if you stick around that long <laughs> so here's the anaconda enclosure once more we've redone the heating and the filtration again once more but I think this time it's gonna stick uh, <laughs> Because I've, well, done it to the max, I feel. And if not, I'm going to have to go above and beyond more. Anyway, let's get into it. So the filtration actually has a new feature. The perpetual water changer, exchanger, whatever you want to call it. And that goes to every enclosure's sump and sumps to be. <laughs> all across the room, wherever there will be an enclosure and a sump, there is an area with a water changing plumbing, even to a room which is yet to be cleaned out, but I'm planning on doing a few bigger aquariums in there. Then we go up to the algae scrubber, which has an extra algae scrubbing apparatus, growing apparatus on it, which grew very quickly. I seeded it a little bit with some of the old algae from this one, but uh that was impressive i thought it would still start with some brown algae nope straight to green and it's covered the whole thing within five days that usually take that took about six months for this one to go to but hey it's already got the work done i guess then over here we have our perpetual water changer this is a two gallon per hour drip emitter here with an airline hose that sends the water to a carbon drip system which just filters out that water uh, all the heavy metals that might be in the tap water, the fluoride that I know is in my water, I get a diagnostic of my water. There's no chlorine or chloramines, but at the same time, I like to remove all the weird stuff that it's not natural. Uh, I probably don't have to do this as I've been using this water without a carbon removal system since I've moved here, which was about eight years ago now and the animals have been living fine and doing well and many still don't have this carbon but at the same time I like to be thorough and they'll eventually get it. Uh, behind there is the caiman, dwarf caiman, which isn't actually a caiman species but they're close enough related that they just called it it. Sorry, fun fact. That one's for this enclosure to be, well it's almost done, but uh, that one will get that sump back there. Anyway, this is the new digs for the algae scrubber, and it's doing pretty good. Pretty awesome. It's a little chilly in there, I guess. 80 degrees, 80.5 degrees. Uh, usually it's 82, 83, but I'm sure it'll catch up. So now that it's daytime, cool down at night. Uh, then we have the overflow, which is really nice. That overflows all the extra water that uh, accumulates after the new water is dripped in. The old water drains from there side to there to the making a water line or water level that is always consistent to this here, let's get a better view to a drain basin again that is always dripping two gallons per hour of water for this enclosure. Other ones have half gallon drip emitters which drain 12 gallons a day. Others have one gallon per hour which drain 24 gallons a day. You know Gotta do the math, but whatever, it's cool. Uh, then also, I'm working on this uh, filter backflow, which uh, uh, will uh, suck out some of the water and some of the animals' enclosure water from through the filter and remove some of the sludge that gets built up in here, which are just bacteria colonies that have overgrown and sometimes gather weird things that they're eating. So like, uh, I guess, Mostly it's just sludge, and it's easily removed with the pump, so I may never need to remove this thing, but I'm going to remove it a few times to check it out with the union there. It's a big union, but at the same time, it'll work. Then we have changed the heating once more. 
As much as I like the patio infrared heaters, they didn't work with my timers. They needed to be used with the remote control. So these are shortwave infrared heat lamps, two of them, 250 watts, and they do the trick. You'll notice there's a terrarium screen below it, and that's just to dissipate some of the heat to make it less intense and to reach the uh, temperature I'm looking for. I do have dimmers, but at the same time, every year you have to change the fuse, which I'm going to use them anyway on something else, but I liked it this way, as you can run them at full, which is, yes, more energy used, but at the same time, this acts as a guard in case any of these shatter. I don't touch them with my bare hands, so they shouldn't, and they don't get wet, so they also shouldn't, but you never know, safety first, knowledge is power, and all that stuff. Then we have the nice little bulb changing system, which is hard to remove with my left hand, but at the same time, it draws them out towards me, and then I can, well actually it comes all the way off if I want it, but that makes the bulb changing way easier, except I usually use my right hand to do so, so that's kind of difficult there. Um, I haven't needed to change these bulbs yet actually, because they're rated for an average of 6,000 hours of lifespan, so they're actually doing pretty good on months two or three, May I lost track. But yeah, and the fans are just to blow some of the hot air uh, away from the ceiling. Uh, here we do have the reticulated pythons sump and algae scrubber. Uh, not much growth on it as it's fairly new, but some you can see the black spots are algae. It's starting to grow, and there's its carbon drip emitter system. And it's a water emitter, I mean, system, which is turned off, which would have to go this way to turn it on. But I need it off so it doesn't reach that water level and then leak again, because I find that leak and seal it again, which this system has been quite leaky. I kind of rushed through it, I guess, when it came to using the two-part epoxy. I thought I did a thorough job, but hey, here we are. And it looks like he has, yes, made some urates in the water, so it's a little in need of a water change, but the filter's still going, just no perpetual water exchanger. Um, this is basically the reticulated python enclosure. I would give you a better view, but there's this dresser I have here in front of it that I'm moving out of this basement to my garage. Uh, it's kind of heavy. I moved it myself once. I don't really want to do it again, so I'm going to get some help. This is the trap box I was talking about. It's not done yet. I'm still epoxying it, sealing it with the, the uh, Pond Armor epoxy on the inside. I'm using extra leftover epoxy to uh, try and recycle. Because sometimes there's like a whole bunch left over. Like the green had a bunch left over, obviously. So that finished the floor. I might go over it a couple other times with some other stuff, like some gray and some tan mostly. I use tan mostly in my enclosures. And there's the door to the anaconda enclosure, which lifts up and has a lock on it. And there's the reticulate button, which lifts up and has a lock on it. But I'm thinking if I can split it in half here with the retic on top and the anaconda on bottom, I can leave them open always and forever, always and forever, and uh, just have it as a hide slash trap box where if they're hiding in there and I need to clean it out, I can put the trap door down. They're in there and I'm in the enclosure. There's the uh, nice good old lock on here. Uh, what else we got here? There's our thermostat, which I would use for the uh, heat lamps, except this is a pulsing one. I've been looking into the Herbstat as more of a dimming thermostat, but it's not really necessary as it reaches the optimal temperature with that terrarium screen lid in place. Otherwise, it got up to 110 degrees or so. Now it's at 105 at usually highest. Except on hot days, it goes up two or three degrees, maybe. It has to be really hot, and my AC has to be closed off. As there's a door upstairs that closes the AC room to from this room, which is super warm. Uh, then we have to show you the boiler room, which I'm super excited about. As we have all the lamps, I kind of stocked up as some people have heard and know. Uh, some people in the government, in our country at least, and other countries already have done this, are phasing out incandescent and halogen light bulbs. So I kind of have 100 and 180 of the two. 180 incandescent 250 watt heat lamps. A bunch of heat, extra heat lamps as well to hold them, heat fixtures, whatever. 
and I think it's a hundred something of not quite as high that as that a hundred something of the 80 watt uh, 120 watt equivalent or whatever and it just makes the same amount of light not enough heat though for the big tanks but they work well for my medium-sized tanks um, bunch of these and they're going up in price for some reason I guess because they're being phased out they went from six to seven dollars as a jump all right come on now when you buy a hundred of them that's 70 bucks right there these are the old infrared heaters uh, patio heaters that I was using I think the Muskoga one on the end there would still actually work with a timer the other six would need a, uh, a clicking device a uh, controller to turn on and off all the time and there's some extra heaters, aquarium heaters on top there and whatnot. Uh, yeah, this is the kind of bulb I used in the retic, just coincidentally, as I didn't have a bunch of these at the moment. And it did burn out a few times. This is my second one that I have. I bought two. So that one burnt out, and the other two were Satco. Beautiful brand. 6,000 hours, whereas these have 2,000 hours worth of longevity. 6,000 hours average. It works really well. I've heard some bad reviews, but most of those people, honestly, I'm assuming, have touched the bulb with their bare hands, which is a no-no when it comes to incandescent and halogens, which are incandescent as well, and a few fluorescents, I believe, is too. Yeah, because uh, the oils on your hands will cause a premature or a shatter burnout thingy. Anyway, yeah, that's that's about the gist of it. Finally made it all in one video here. This is my severalist attempt. I think that's all we we're going to show you here. Oh, I'll show you the Cayman enclosure a little bit from a different angle. It's really nice. Uh, you can imagine without supplies on it. Uh, it's land in the back like usual and water in the front. It actually holds 150 gallons. Just did a little calculation there from a pool calculator. And it should... It's a female dwarf Cayman. She'll only get this long with tail and mostly tail. And she's upstairs actually growing like a champ, but uh, either way, she should be fine in there. And if she, if not, I have room to build a bigger one. But I'm thinking with her activity level and size and all that, she does have room to grow and move. But uh, they get more land oriented when they're older, I hear. So I made it 50 50 water, land, boom. And then we'll attach the uh, heating elements and uh, filtration goes below and comes out and in there overflow again for the water dripper which is up there and then uh yeah it just kind of needs a few coats of epoxy to make it a finer grit sand so two coats literally and a fine grit sand which is right there in between the two which is the last one thinned out to allow the sand to kind of show more and uh be nice and soft and smooth but still grippy still grippable and there's the drain and uh, everything else is under here yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm fixing a draft that was in here the same way I built most of the enclosures with hardware cloths and mortar and concrete. So this is the draft area. Oh, shoot. I just took a picture. This is the draft area. You can feel a little breeze, but you can't. I can. And then uh, that was a pain when it got negative 17 with the wind chill of negative 32 last year. But we're not going to have that this year because we're fixing it. Anyway, i let you a little more deeper into my life here. And showing you a bunch of new enclosures so hope you enjoyed these were three I know I usually only show you the anaconda but here we are all right enjoy have a good one and we'll see you in the next video uh, there it is